My pensive Sarah, thy soft cheek reclined, thus on mine arm, most soothing sweet it is, to sit beside our cot, our cot overgrown, with white flowered jasmine, and the broad leaved myrtle, me emblems they of innocence and love. And watch the clouds that late were rich with light, slow saddening round, and mark the star of eve, serenely brilliant, such would wisdom be. Shine opposite, how exquisite the sense, snatched from yon bean field, and the world so hushed. The stilly murmur of the distant sea tells us of silence. And that simplest lute, placed lengthways in the clasping casement, hark! How by the desultory breeze caressed, like some coy maid half yielding to her lover. It pours such sweet upbraiding, as much needs tempt to repeat the wrong. And now, its strings bolder swept, the long sequacious notes over delicious surges sink and rise, such a soft floating witchery of sound, as twilight elfins make when they at eve, voyage on gentle gales from fairyland, where melodies round honey dropping flowers, footless and wild like birds of paradise, nor pause nor perch hovering on untamed wing, Oh, the one life within us and abroad, which meets all motion and becomes its soul. A light and sound, a sound like power and light, rhythm in all thought, and joyance everywhere. Methinks it should have been impossible not to love all things in a world so filled, where the breeze warbles and the mute still air is music slumbering on her instrument. And thus, my love, as on the midway slope of yonder hill, I stretch my limbs at noon. Whilst through my half-closed eyelids, I behold the sunbeams dance like diamonds on the main and tranquil muse upon tranquility. For full many a thought uncalled and undetained and many idle flitting fantasies traverse my indolent and passive brain as wild and various as the random gales that swell and flutter on this subject lute. And what if all of animated nature be but organic harps diversely framed that tremble into thought as over them sweeps, plastic and vast, one intellectual breeze, at once the soul of each and God of all. But thy more serious eye a mild reproof darts, O beloved woman, nor such thoughts dim and unhallowed dost thou not reject. And biddest me walk humbly with my God, meek daughter in the family of Christ. Well hast thou said and wholly dispraised these shapings of the unregenerate mind, bubbles that glitter as they rise and break on vain philosophy's a babbling spring, for never guiltless may I speak of him, the incomprehensible. I save when with awe I praise him, and with faith that only feels, who with his saving mercies healed me, a sinful and most miserable man, wildered and dark, and give me to possess peace and his cot and thee, heart honored maid. Okay, so we had the Aeolian harp, and an Aeolian harp is a musical instrument that produces sound when currents of air pass through it. So based on that, we think the poem is going to be something that has to do with music, will be musical, um, and harps are typically romantic and have a romantic connotation to them. And because the Aeolian harp is specifically played when currents of air pass through it, that makes us think that it will have something to do with nature. So when we read the first stanza, we can tell that the speaker is a man who admires the beauty of the world and his love, and he is very excited about life. We also learn that our audience is Sarah, and we are introduced to a couple of symbols which are the flowers jasmine and myrtle. And those, as you can read in the next line, jasmine symbolizes innocence and myrtle symbolizes love. So our occasion of the poem is in deep religious and natural thought and in love with life. And the purpose of it is to reflect on the relationship with God, love, life, and nature. So based on that, our subject is God, nature, and love. We can see in the poem that the tone of it is excited, 
contemplative, earnest, fanciful, lyrical, reflective, and in our last stanza, we have a shift to a more angry tone, um, and we'll talk more about that later. So our excited tone is emphasized by all of the exclamation points that are circled in the poem. And when we look at stanza three, you can tell that the speaker is starting to take a nap and reflect on some things. And we can infer that nature is his muse. And with the next stanza, we realize that nature is the harp and God is the breeze of nature that is playing the harp. So we are introduced to the God symbol in the poem. And when we flip to the back, we realize that we have the shift in tone um, because he is angry since Sarah doesn't take him and his views about God seriously, and she doesn't think he's humble because of it. 